What's going on everyone? Today's video is gonna be on the top five tips I would give to someone to succeed in clinical year during PA school. Tip number one, I would recommend developing a good routine for each rotation, because each rotation is gonna be different starting time-wise and what you're gonna be wearing. So some days it could start at 7 a.m., other days it could be 9 a.m., other rotations it could be 7 p.m. A lot of rotations are business casual, some are also wearing scrubs all day. I would recommend getting everything laid out the night before, get your outfit ready, get your shower ready, get your coffee ready, so all you have to do is push the button. Make sure your lunch is packed you don't want to be without something to eat and you don't really want to be spending a lot of money on food during the rotation so just make sure you have a good routine for each rotation because each will differ slightly tip number two deals with communication so when you're on rotations i'd recommend putting your absolute focus when you're on the rotation and asking as many questions as possible with your preceptor or if you're also on the rotation with one of your peers you can bounce blueprint topics off of each other it's a really good way to study and it helps things stick more when you talk about them and when you teach someone or if you have a preceptor talking about it and they're able to give really good examples Examples on past patients they had and that just helps the information stick a little bit better. Also with communication, this should be common sense, but like rules, they were made because someone did something stupid. So when you're on rotation, make sure you don't do or say anything that you wouldn't want to say or do in front of the director of your program because it didn't happen to me, obviously, but it did happen to some of my peers in my program where they had to then go in front of a disciplinary board and plead their case of what they said or what they did. And I think this was all going on like during their rotation. So they had to take time off of their rotation, losing the hours and also lose some precious study time for the rotation exam to go deal with some drama that has nothing to do with anything. Another tidbit for communication is to speak to and treat everyone on that rotation as if they could be a professional reference for your resume. It's another good thing for networking to have a good group of professionals that you already worked with. They got to know a little bit about your personality and how hardworking you are. It could go a long way with you getting a job in the future, which is the end goal. All right, going on to tip number three, how to pass the EORs, or at least how I pass the EORs. I thought this was a really effective method what I would do is during the week, I would go on the rotation and treat it like a full-time job because that's what it is. You're following around a preceptor and you're doing their hours for what they work for their full-time job. And then once you're done with that job, then you come home and then you relax because you can't go through the entire clinical year working a full-time job and then immediately coming home and studying for six hours and then getting four hours of sleep and waking up and doing it all over again. That's just ridiculous. You want to do, like I said in tip number two, you want to ask a bunch of questions while you're on the rotation. So you're getting all that info during the day. So you can come home and watch YouTube or Netflix and chill out. But on the weekends, that's a different story. I would set aside five to six hours on Saturday and Sunday to study pretty hard each day. And then some study tools that I used that I thought were amazing during rotation is number one, Rosh Review. There's not much better than Rosh Review, in my opinion. I know it costs a lot of money, but you could get some of your peers together or get your entire program together. And I believe Rosh Review would do a, a nice discount if you have enough people to sign up. Just get someone to coordinate that. But also with Rosh Review, you have these boost exams that that's like a mock EOR exam, the end of rotation exam, that I would like to take five to six days before the actual exam itself. So that gives you a really good idea of where you're at and how I would utilize the last four days because the last four days leading up to the actual exam, I don't do anything else but study. So my main study days are on the weekends and four days leading up to the actual exam itself. And then I would take that boost ROSH exam about five to six days before so you can take it, see how you did. And usually if you get a 60% or above, uh, you're usually golden on passing the EOR. But then for those last four days, I would go through that entire exam and then that's all I would do that day. I would take it and then I would rest and then I would wake up the next day and then I would review it, see what I missed, see the big topics that I got wrong and then I would only study those topics because you don't need to study topics you're already really comfortable with like cardiology and stuff like that. I would also take a look at the blueprint and see what percentage things are on it. You're not gonna be spending a lot of time on things that are only like two to 5% of the actual exam itself because that would be a giant waste of time. I would review it and then move on, but don't spend hours on like dermatology. Then the second study tool I would recommend is the PA rotation exam review book. This book is amazing. I don't know if you can see these colors on the side, but it has it sectioned off into like family medicine, internal med, pediatrics, emergency medicine, OBGYN, psychiatry, and general surgery. This book's amazing. It goes through pretty much the entire blueprint and it gives you the disease, gives you the etiology, the prevalence, the risk factors, the clinical signs and symptoms, diagnostics, therapy, the prognosis, and the health maintenance. But along with those charts, it also adds in a lot of pictures, which is really nice to make things stick better. But if you're interested in this, it's linked in the description. Take you right to Amazon so you can purchase it. I highly recommend that. Two resources I don't really recommend anymore. I would 
would be the PA Brie. I tried to use it on a lot of the rotations I was on, but I started to find out that the information was outdated and I didn't want to be studying outdated information. Uh, another resource I wouldn't really recommend is Smarty Pants. Smarty Pants is way too easy. It'll make you feel great when you get 100% on the exams, but at the end of the day, it's just too easy and I really wouldn't waste your time with it. I would stick with Rosh in the PA Rotation Exam Review Book. Those are about the only resources you need. You don't need like a thousand different things. All right, moving on to tip number four. I'd recommend arriving at least 15 minutes early to every single rotation so you don't feel rushed. It's really nice to have those extra 15 minutes to yourself to get yourself in the right mindset, to listen to a nice motivating song, to either relax you or get you pumped up for the day. Tip number five is to just take it one day at a time. I know it can be really nerve wracking starting a new rotation, having to do the onboarding process for every single rotation. You're entering in a new environment. You don't really know how your preceptor is going to be, if they're going to be really cool with you, or if they're the type of person that is kind of condescending and likes to show how smart they are and just grills you the entire time, not really for your benefit, just to make themselves feel better. That can happen. So I would prepare for that. Not only to make yourself nervous, but it also helps you for the real world because not everyone's going to be nice. Other than that, just learn from your mistakes, move on from them, and just try to have fun in your clinical rotations because it's a once in a lifetime thing where you actually get to dip your feet into each specialty and see what you want to do as a career. Or you might want to do two different jobs. You might want to have a full-time job and then also have a part-time job in something else. Like if you want to work full-time in emergency medicine and have a part-time job in dermatology. On my OBGYN rotation, there was a person that worked full-time in the emergency department and came down every single Wednesday to OBGYN. And a bonus tip is to not listen to your peers on how their experience was on each rotation. I had a lot of people tell me that they hated the rotation, they hated the preceptor, they hated everything about the rotation, and then I went on that rotation and I loved it. Also, the exact opposite, people would love rotations and then I would go on that rotation and I wouldn't like it at all. But it's nice to go into each rotation without a preconceived idea. You want to go in there with an open mind so you can experience the rotation for yourself and not go in there with the idea of how it should be described by your peers. But those are the tips. I hope they help you on clinical rotations. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification. And that's about it. See you on the next one.